Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year. Today we are on day 328, working our way to the end. Thank you, Jesus. Bible in a Year is a video series that the Lord asked me to do last year. And uh, it's a series of reflections that uh, come from the reading. We're reading through the Bible every single day. And uh, we've endeavored to read through the entire Bible for the year 2020. <laughs> this is the year that we need something stable. We need the Word of God. And I'm excited to do this. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. I'm grateful for the grace of God and uh, the power that has enabled me to do this. This has been a tremendous blessing to myself. And many of you have testified. What my hope is in this video series is that one, I want to get you to think about the Word of God. I want to <clears throat> I want to learn how to rightly divide the Word, how to think about the Word of God strategically, how to define the Word of God with the Word of God. They call that rightly dividing the Word. And also, in addition to that, I want to develop the discipline to get into the Bible every day every single day. Now, this is a commitment and this is something that we're going to have to be intentional about and we have been intentional about this. I mean, think about it. We've done over 320 days of Bible in a year and here we are. That That's commitment. The fact that you stuck with this is commitment. Many of you have gone back to day number one and you're working your way through. That's a commitment. You know what? God will honor that and the Word of God is going to be a blessing to you. So let's get into the Word of God. Now, as is custom for me to do, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, but you all can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you're most comfortable with. And I've got several scriptures here from the reading that I'd like to talk to you about. We're in Proverbs chapter 28. And I want to look at verse 20, for starters. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Interesting. Faithfulness will get us to abound with blessings. If you want the blessings of God, Show yourself to be faithful. Well, a good question now would be, what am I supposed to be faithful in? What are the things that God wants me to be faithful in? And we all have things that God has instructed us. Uh, the foundation. We, we need to be faithful in our relationship with God, which means Bible reading. We need to spend time in the Word of God because spending time in the Word is spending time in the presence of God. And this is how we get to know who God is. It's through His Word. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. It is the presence of the living God, the truth. Because remember, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So when we abide in the Word, we are abiding in the presence of God. So if we want to abound in blessings, we need to learn how to be faithful. We, we can be faithful in the Word. We need to be faithful in prayer. We need to be faithful in assembling with the believers. Now that could include going to church, going to Bible study, getting together with some believers, talking scripture. That's what we need to be faithful in. And then in addition to that, God has probably told you something that he wants you to do. For example, uh, God asked me to do this Bible in a year series, and I have done my best to be faithful in it. Now, in, in according to my own standard, obviously I've come short of the glory, I've fallen behind, but 
that doesn't matter here, that's neither here nor there because I'm endeavoring to finish. And the race isn't given to the swift or the strong, but to those that endure. So the principle here is that, you know what, we need to go and keep on going. So this is something God has told me to be faithful in. This is something God's commanded me to do and something that I've endeavored to be faithful in. What are some things that God has given you to do that you can be faithful in? If we are faithful in a few things or in the little things, God promised that he would make us ruler over many. And that's a blessing that we can hold on to. Now, check out the second part of this verse. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. I wonder, in light of that verse right there, where does that leave all of those get-rich-quick schemes? You're familiar with the pyramid schemes. You got to buy into this and then sell that to other people and get them to buy into it. And the more you do that, the higher in rank you move up and the more potential earnings you can receive. And a lot of that stuff is, those are get rich quick schemes. That's really not biblical. Now, can God get you rich quickly? <laughs> Certainly, absolutely. Absolutely. God can, at the snap of finger, make you rich. Oh, you want Bible for that? Good, very good. Think of the example of Joseph. Joseph was faithful as a prisoner. Joseph was faithful as a slave. That's what he was given. He was, he was given to be a slave. But he was faithful in that. And God, instantaneously, overnight, elevated him riches and honor came to him in a matter of minutes at the word of pharaoh but i don't think that's the same as a get rich quick scheme there's no such thing as getting rich quick well now obviously people win the lottery but you know what happens to people that win the lottery oftentimes they lose all the money and end up in debt because when you win the lottery, yes, you get a lot of money. Is it fun? Sure. Do I want to win the lottery? Oftentimes I've asked the Lord. I said, Father, hey, just bless me. See if I will not be a blessing to the kingdom. But the problem is when you, when you hit the lottery, you bypass the process. And the process is a vital element or tool of preparation. So he that maketh haste, to be rich shall not be innocent. You're going to be guilty. You're going to fall into a trap. And God doesn't want us to fall into traps. There's a reason why he takes us through a process. Did God promise you blessings? Maybe so. Did God tell you that he was going to make you financially fluid? fluid uh, give you financial fluidity? Give you financial flexibility? Perhaps. God told me that he was going to bless my finances. And he has, but that doesn't mean that he's going to skip the process because God's not going to give something to someone who's not able to handle it. And so I appreciate the process that God takes me through because I want to be able to handle what God gives me. I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to lose my way because God has blessed me. Oftentimes, people get lost in the blessings of God. Look at Israel, for example. When they came out of Egypt, God blessed them with all kinds of stuff. And it wasn't very long until they began to murmur and complain. They had it too good. They were filled with blessings and they forgot about God. And oftentimes, God warns his people, hey, don't get too comfortable in the blessing. Don't, don't let that get to your head to where you forget about me. And oftentimes, that's exactly what Israel's done. They forgot about God. I don't want to be like that. I don't want that for myself. And I'm sure that you don't want that. I know that many of you love God and you want to do the right thing. And uh, so the process is something that we should embrace pressing through the process. It's good for us because God is able to make all things work together for our good. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart 
is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Huh. What does the Bible say about the heart? Doesn't scripture tell us that the heart is desperately wicked and evil? Let's, let's, let's go there. Desperately wicked. I want to look at that. Desperately wicked. Yes, Jeremiah 17, 9, we've read this. The heart is deceitful above all things. There isn't anything that's more deceitful than the heart, according to the Bible. And you know what? The devil knows how to use that against us. He does it all the time. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Scripture seems to imply here that you don't even have the capacity to know your own heart. The heart is deceitful. How can you know your heart? We think one way. We, we see things one way and only to have circumstances reveal st uh, something in our heart that we didn't see. We thought that we were this kind of person and in reality, there were things hidden in our heart that revealed that we were not that kind of a person. Let the right situation come up. Let the right circumstance uh, present itself and you'll see people flash their true colors. Oh, we are so good at hiding. Me include, I, I'm good at hiding. That's all I used to do. I used to hide when I was younger. I still catch myself hiding. Nobody wants to be vulnerable. Nobody wants to expose themselves. Nobody wants to be weak. So we project this image and we buy into it. The sad part is we begin to believe this image that we project of ourselves. This is who we want to be. This is who we would like to be. And we begin to believe that. But the truth is that we are not that. Why? Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Let's look at what the Bible says here. Hallelujah, Jesus. He that trust, trusteth in his own heart is a fool. This is why if you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. Why? Because the heart is deceitfully wicked. The heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Not just wicked, but desperately wicked. <laughs> Which paints a picture to me that the heart is ready and willing and looking for an opportunity to get into some mischief. Looking for an opportunity to express its wicked desires. How many wicked thoughts have you had in the course of today? If we all kept track, I think that it would show us a new image of who we really are. But you know what's beautiful in light of this knowledge? God knows who we are. God is familiar with all of the secret things, things that we don't even know about ourselves. We think that we're cool. We think that we're good. But there's areas of our life that we're not aware of. They're, they're desperately wicked. But God knows about these areas. And he still loves us. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. He still gives us grace. He still gives us mercy. There is still compassion and loving kindness for us. How blessed are we as a people? I mean, really. He shall be delivered. Whoso walks wisely. How do you walk wisely? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, I believe it is verse... Uh, four and five let's go there trust in the lord with all your heart trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding that's what the bible says Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Yeah, don't trust your heart, but trust the Lord with your heart. That means bring your heart to God. Let him scan you. There's another verse in the New Testament. It's found in Romans. He that searcheth the heart. Romans 8.27 And he that searcheth the hearts 
knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Jesus, the Spirit of God, searches our hearts. This is why we need to trust uh, trust the Lord with all our heart because he searches our hearts. He'll tell us what's in there. And remember the word of God. The Bible says it's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12. We've gone through that many times. But piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God can determine, hey, this is a wicked thought. This is not wicked. This is, this is deceitful right here. This is not deceitful. We need the Bible. This is why we need the Bible. This is why... Bible in a year is going to be a blessing to you because the word of God can highlight some of these uh, dysfunctional areas of deceit and wickedness in our lives and put us in the position to surrender that to God, which is exactly what we would want to do or should want to do. In my opinion, praise Jesus. I want to go to one more sect of scripture found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Now, the Bible says here, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Uh, multiple times the Bible tells us that we need to be of one mind. That means we, we should not have division in the body. We should be of one mind concerning the teachings, concerning the doctrines. And yet there are doctrines that are so diverse and different that uh, different sects of Christianity have. It causes us to be in a place where we are not of one mind. But I believe that God is doing a work where he is going to bring the body together and of one mind so that we as a body will not be double-minded. I believe that's going to happen. And I look forward to that because really what we need right now is unity. Where there are agendas to cause division and to divide, unity is what we need. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. We need unity. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and may he give you peace. Like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. If you have not already done so and you wanna be a part of the community, I just wanna welcome you. Share this with your family and with your friends and let this word be a blessing to somebody that you know. Thank you everyone for your love and for your support. Thank you for helping me reach the world by sharing these videos and just partnering with me in ministry. You've locked arms with me in this labor of love and to God be the glory. May his grace be with you all. Lord have mercy. Please have mercy on me. And if I done somebody wrong, have mercy if you